The new Omicron variant of coronavirus is likely to pose a very high global risk and some regions will face severe consequences from it. That's the warning from the WHO who's advising countries to accelerate the vac vaccinations of high priority groups. 13 countries we know now have reported confirmed or probable new cases of the variant. But what has not been established yet is how transmissible or dangerous it is or how effectively the current vaccines will protect against it. There are more than 30 mutations in the spike of this new variant, which is the part of the virus that vaccines train the body to recognize and attack. And at 26 of those are unique to Omicron. That's compared to 10 in Delta, 6 in Beta. Amid fears of another global surge of the virus, many countries have begun imposing travel bans. Japan the latest, Australia as well, delaying the next stage of its reopening. The UK, EU and the US have already announced restrictions on entry after South African scientists identified the new variant last week. Well, let's hear now from the WHO's Director General who says the emergence of Omicron means that we can't afford to let our guard down. We don't yet know whether Omicron is associated with more transmission, more severe disease, more risk of reinfections or more risk of evading vaccines. Scientists at WHO and around the world are working urgently to answer these questions. We shouldn't need another wake-up call. We should all be wide awake to the threat of this virus. But Omicron's very emergence is another reminder that although many of us might think we're done with COVID-19, it's not done with us. Well, South Africa's President Cyril Ramaphosa has condemned the decision by countries, including the US, Europe and parts of Asia, to ban flights from Southern Africa over the new variant, which was first identified by South African scientists. This is a little of what the country's health minister had to say in a news conference a short while ago. There is just no basis for um, uh, some of the leaders of countries which have imposed uh, these restrictions on traveling for, uh, uh, for, for us in South Africa and other countries in Southern Africa. There is no basis for South Africans to panic. We've been here before. Uh, this is no new uh, territory. We, have, we are now more than 20 months experience in terms of uh, the COVID-19, the various variants. So we've just heard from the Director General of the WHO saying there's a lot we don't know about the variant, including how dangerous it is, how transmissible it is, what will happen with vaccines around the variant. But some of the first answers we're going to get are from South Africa. So let's take you live now to Durban. Richard Lessels is an infection disease doctor at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. Very good to see you. Can you tell us, given the information you have so far, what we do know about the variant? I think, as you say, there's a lot that's uncertain and, and, and we don't yet know the specifics about how transmissible this is. But but what we're seeing happening here in in particularly in Hauteng province uh, around Johannesburg, Pretoria in South Africa is, again, quite rapid spread of this virus. Um, and, and that means it's spreading rapidly in a population that we think has very high levels of immunity. Um, from either past infection or from vaccination. And so that suggests that, yes, this is a highly transmissible variant. It can spread very efficiently from person to person uh, and also suggests that it may have got better at evading some parts of our immune protection. And really the question is now to, is to unpick that and to understand uh, the degree of that. And, and, and then, as you said, how severe is the disease that is caused by this, particularly absolutely. in those people that, that have some protection so from absolutely, vaccines? Absolutely, Richard. It's becoming clearer then about the transmissibility, perhaps, and the mutations of the variant and on talking about the spike we were hearing about before. But that's a very crucial question. What are the kind of symptoms that people who are getting this variant, what, what are they experiencing? I mean, so far, as with all the other variants, there's no there's no suggestion that the clinical illness, the clinical picture is is is, is significantly different with this variant. 
and and you you maybe saw lots of reports over the weekend kind of anecdotal reports that a lot of the cases are are mild but there we have to just urge a bit of caution that it's really too early to understand that because a lot of the initial spread with this variant in Hauteng province was amongst the younger age groups was in universities and and the kind of 10 to 30 year olds because they're very mobile the virus spreads often early in those groups and so they're the ones that are anyway at, at lower risk of getting severely unwell and being hospitalized so Richard, so, so far you haven't seen hospital admissions go up for instance we have seen hospital admissions go up, but but most of those hospital admissions are in the unvaccinated still. And we're just unpacking to, to, to what extent the admissions are going up and how does that tie to the to the vaccination status or the prior infection status. So if we can assume that this uh, variant is more transmissible, I know that hasn't been conclusively proved yet, but there is lots of thought that it is. Does that mean that uh, countries making decisions to reimpose border restrictions are doing the right thing? No, because I think we've we've seen already within a, within two or three days that these border restrictions are 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 largely ineffective because we continue to forget how rapidly this virus spreads, not just within borders, but but uh, 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 between between countries and continents. And what you'll see over the course of this week is is this virus will be this variant will be detected in in most corners of the of the globe again. And so uh, the, these border measures, just by the nature of this virus, tend to be uh, too late to contain the the, the spread, and and clearly they do a, a, an enormous amount of damage in the in the process. Richard, when we hear there are more than thirty mutations in the spike of the variant, twenty six of those unique to Omicron, that makes it feel like it's quite different, say from Delta and from Beta. Does that also mean it will make the vaccine more difficult to tweak? I don't think it means that it'll make the vaccines more difficult to tweak. For, for many of the vaccines, that process is quite simple of tweaking the vaccines once you have the, the genetic code. Um, what, it, what, what we need to understand is whether that tweaking of the vaccines is necessary or whether the protection against severe disease and hospitalization actually holds up very strongly, as we've seen with the other variants of concern so far. Richard Lessel, really interesting to get your thoughts. Thank you so much for joining us from Durban. Thank you. Well, the UK has convened an urgent meeting of G7 health ministers to discuss the variant first detected in South Africa and high on their agenda will be fears that Omicron could spread rapidly and partially evade existing jabs. The World Health Organization has warned it poses a very high risk globally, but says there are considerable uncertainties about the possible effect of the variant's spike mutations, as we've been discussing. While well, already Japan, a G7 member, announcing it's closing its borders to all new foreign visitors from tomorrow. So let's bring you the latest from Tokyo with Rupert Winfield Hayes. Japan has had very tough border restrictions for most of the last two years because of COVID. Uh, those began to be lifted on November the 8th. Uh, and now, uh, just three weeks later, um, the prime minister said they're going back in. So this does not affect Japanese nationals. It does not affect residents. And it doesn't affect people who have multiple entry visas to Japan. But it will affect everybody else. That means foreign businessmen and women, obviously, uh, and students uh, and tourists. Uh, tourists were not going to be allowed in any way. But so it's a, essentially business people and students. And it's really bad news for the students because so many students have been waiting to get back into Japan to, to start their or resume their studies. They were very hopeful they were going to be able to do that this winter. Now it looks like they're going to have to wait again. So lots of different pieces re of reaction coming in today about the new variant. And we've just been keeping across an interview uh, that has been given by the CEO of Moderna. They're one of the big pharmaceutical com companies that is producing one of the vaccines. Stefan Bansell. Now, he has said, and this is really crucial uh, about the timescale we need for some of the data around the new variant. He has said that data on vaccine efficacy could be known in two to six weeks. So that, he says, is what they're looking for in terms of getting some clarity about how effective the vaccine is. They need 
two to six weeks. That comes